If this happens to be your first video, welcome to our journey. We're currently engaged in the restoration of an old 1780 cabin. In this episode, we're completing the final section of the footer. However, I realized we only have eight bags of concrete to commence this task. I don't have enough uh, concrete, but I will start with what I have today and then tonight I can grab some more. Time is of the essence, so let's dive in and get things started without any delays. I have a pile of broken bricks left over uh, from uh, my gate job. Gate job? Not a gate job, a gate job. Oh. Let's be specific on that. Mm. I don't want any... Misinformation. I don't want anyone to get excited. Huh? Oh, wow. Well, we're living in such an interesting world nowadays. Yes, we are. So, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use this on the bottom of my foundation. I'm gonna lay them down and pour concrete in between. Some of you might say, Russ, don't do that. That's not good. Pour concrete. Yes, and I'll do that. But this way I'll be able to actually save some concrete. And if you lay this on the bottom or on the bottom foundation, just like this, flat, and concrete all around it, and then concrete goes on top of this as well, this will make a good foundation. If you've been keeping up with this series, you know about our commitment to restore this ancient log cabin. My wife diligently captures the process on camera while I dedicate time each week to labor on reviving the cabin to its original glory. Some of our methods may appear unconventional or even risky, but rest assured, everything is meticulously planned and carefully considered. I value your input, so please, if you notice anything, share your thoughts in the comment section. I always appreciate exploring alternative options if I see it fit in our situation. But meanwhile, enjoy this video. Raz, you know what would be cool? If we discover like underground tunnel here. People do that all the time. They will start digging and then they find a underground tunnel. Wow. They lead somewhere else. Or create our own. Yes, but it's cool to find one. And imagine it's filled with lots of gold. Can you imagine? Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> if we dig a tunnel and then fill it with gold. Where will we find the gold? There's places we can steal it from. <laughs> I think he watches too many shows. I hope you understand that my previous statement was meant as a joke for everyone thinking I'm serious. I'm definitely not planning to spend any time behind bars. But what I'm actually trying to accomplish today is lay the foundation for my footer using the limited bags of concrete that I only have. I know it might sound unconventional, but I want to kickstart the process for the final side of my foundation. Understand, this will be the first portion of the footer and once completed, we'll allow it to settle and tomorrow we'll move on to pouring concrete over the top. The foundation of my footer is gonna be very nice. The final pour will be 12 inches thick and 24 inches in width, completing the footer for the cabin. Once we complete the footer, we'll backfill it, ensuring that it's securely placed in soil, preventing any movement or disturbance. And some might wonder why I don't just order a truck of concrete. The issue with that is they typically require large quantities for a delivery. And since I'm working on this project in sections, my current approach is the best option available to me at this point. As you may have observed, I'm adjusting the consistency of this portion to make the concrete a bit more runny. So this will enable to flow around all of the bricks I've laid and seep into every area and all of the small holes. One more left. We have four more left. And these guys are gonna be enough for our foundation. Mm -hmm.
this is pretty good. I'm actually using most of the rainwater. <laughs> See, God provides for us. He knew you needed water. So look at this. I, I have this is my fifth bag, and I'm still using the water. Dang. So close, guys. Check this out. This rock is going to be here for another 200 years. Crazy, right? It just proves rough. If you set a rock and you never move and never touch, it doesn't go anywhere. Right? Exactly. We won't delve into this theory in this video, but it's a yeah. topic we frequently yeah, we discuss with it. others, yeah, adding a fun element to our conversations. Yeah. Meanwhile, as we work, our daughter eagerly anticipates the possibility of a snow on the horizon. Really? Where? Here. So we are. I don't see snow coming in. Next week. You think so? Uh-huh. It's awesome. going to be very cold, like 17 degrees. And it's gonna rain. We all know what's gonna happen. It's gonna snow! Or freeze or uh, rain freeze or. What, the drops freeze out of nowhere? They're like, boof, boof, boof. Exactly. <laughs> All right guys, so I'm finished for today. Uh, I don't have enough concrete uh, to actually finish this job, so we will have to go to Lowe's, uh, pick up some more concrete, and tomorrow we'll do the final touch, so. And as we finish this job, there are always other tasks that call for our attention, like fallen branches from the previous storm, creating a mess that may not be fully seen on camera. Nevertheless, we consistently engage in a cleanup efforts to ensure everything remains tidy and well maintained around our property and that's just part of the deal when you have a large property all right guys so we're back today i bought more concrete and today is beautiful day it's close to 56 degrees and uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us so let's take care of the business now so we don't have to deal it later because tomorrow it's gonna be raining not gonna be good weather so let's go let's take care of some business purchased more than 25 bags of concrete and we are nearly through them. The final step involves securing the rebar and commencing the concrete pour over the steel. If you've never done this before, it's a physically demanding task that engages your arms and upper body as you mix concrete and water. Despite the challenges, this marks my last phase and I'm extremely thrilled about completing it and moving to some other projects in this cabin. Trader, Russ, come on. Panta's not gonna be so happy. Your son kiss. What happened? Ah, uh, back up. I like it. I, I ran thought, out. <laughs> I ran out. So. I thought you were cheating on son kiss. No, I never cheated on son kiss. I'm not a cheater. Aww. Just at times when you don't have anything, you gotta drink a substitute, which is Pepsi. Is that good for you? And Pepsi is not. No, I don't like Pepsi. Maybe you should just try water. I should. We have how many left? We have eight, and I need to stretch as much as I can. Yep. This 
This guy is not quitting, guys. It's already been five hours and he's not quitting. No smoke break, no water break, no nothing, guys. How does it feel, Rose? <laughs> we don't have time to waste. Exactly, guys. This is how we do it. You want results fast? Don't take breaks. I know you get to tempted by relaxing, but that's the devil's work. <laughs> Kidding. By the way, right now I'm adding some bricks. I can tell. Yeah, so I can actually have enough concrete. Because that's how you kind of, what is it called? Conserve? Conserve, yeah. I was going to say consume. Because <laughs> I don't have enough concrete. Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand With everything around me shaking I've never been more glad Cause I put much faith in Jesus During the process of working on this footer It has become clear to me that our robust foundation is absolutely essential Without a sturdy base, there is a risk of the entire structure collapsing. That's why I've invested significant time and effort in prioritizing the foundation as a crucial aspect in this restoration process. Our primary objective is for this cabin to stand the test of time for many more years. Although this specific phase presented its challenges, the prospect of overcoming them and moving forward is incredibly gratifying. Oh, almost there, guys. Crazy. Felt like eternity. And now I give you the eternal struggle. No. It's more real. For you it felt like eternity. <laughs> I'm I'm the one who's Working. mixing it. I know Ross. I understand. Trust me, I know how it feels. <laughs> no, you don't. You I know. Don't. Ross, imagine giving birth, okay? Extremely pain. This We're is not, not pain. Uh, Ross, this, this is, is not pain. pain. Right. I love men compare everything painful. Trust me. I haven't experienced at all. I certainly won't attempt to compare my work to the labor my wife has endured. What I'm doing is a relatively small task compared to bringing children into this world, for which I'm truly grateful to my wife. Russ, what motivates you every day to do this? Tell you the truth? You. Really? You said if I don't do this, I don't eat, so. <laughs> wow, blame it on your wife. So I decided, well, hey, <laughs> I want to eat. Well, how else should I motivate you, Russ? Right? You see, guys, I'm a hostage, actually. Yep. Somebody said, blink twice if I'm a hostage. As amusing as it may sound, I motivate and challenge myself to undertake this work, all in pursuit of enjoying the fruits of our labor. While I may not particularly enjoy certain aspects such as mixing or carrying 80 pound bags of concrete, the satisfaction of nearing completion and moving on to the next task makes it truly rewarding. You got there, Russ. You almost there. All right, guys. So we are finished for today. I finally finished the concrete, and this is the last batch that we had to do, and the last side. So from here and out, uh, we will have to actually work on some other jobs, like finishing our block and working on actually leveling this cabin so very exciting stuff so if you enjoyed this video please like share and uh, hey listen don't forget next week we'll be back russ never ever quit you hear me never If you quit, I'll take your place. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Can you see that happening? No. Why is that? You'll get your hands dirty. It's okay. You can always wash them. <laughs> <laughs>